Okay, so you know how to make uh, selections and such. Now I'm going to do probably the most interesting for the landscape architects. You can download the BGT data. It has like all the data on a pretty uh, small scale uh, of the Netherlands. So houses, streets, sidewalks, uh, bushes, uh, forests, benches, sometimes even, uh, let me see, even uh, even trees, in individual trees. So I'm going to show you how to get that data. You can all, you can go to the PDOC uh, website, make your selection that you want. This is a way too big selection, but just for the sake of it, you go to city, city GML, make download, and it will give you a download option, and you can download all that data on your computer and just drag it into GIS. Uh, another way is by using the BGT plugin, uh, going first to plugins, manage and install, then searching for BGT, you install the plugin, and then okay, you put in the, so you know where you are, the aerial photo, uh, let me see, Close. Did it make it correctly? Yes, the CRS is standing is right. So let's type in a location. You can type in a street location. I'm just going to type in Utrecht. Then we're going somewhere. Let's say near the water. Something like this. We're going to download this. Click BGT. Uh, within the map extent, so now everything that we're looking at is going to be downloaded. You can do an intersecting layer, so you might have a layer of the municipality and you say everything that's in the municipality I want to download. Or you can import uh, zip data, so that which you downloaded, for example, from this website. So we're just going to do within the map extent, and save it uh, to here, let's go to Utrecht, EPT, save. Uh, I can't stress this enough, you need to save your project before you're going to do this. Or else you run the chance that everything is going to uh, go wrong, the QG QGIS may shut down, and we have to do the whole thing over again. So uh, yeah, add imported files to the project, select OK, and it started downloading and importing the files, or the tiles. You can see the progress over here and I'm just going to quickly pause this video because uh, it might take a while so be right back okay so it finished up it took approximately like 10 minutes but as you can see we got the map in uh, in the GIS software and this is our extent that we selected I just went ahead and uh, tried to get the same part in here so let's just, just to show you how this would work. So this might actually be a quicker way, I'm not sure. I'm going to just save this so I can open it if necessary. Uh, let's say PGT zip data. Let's see what it will do. Extract. Okay. If it's busy, done importing, okay. Oh, I selected it the same thing. Not so smart. Uh, Maybe I did. Oh well, that's another way to do it. So we have this, and I guess you all know how to make the selections. So we got all our layers. And I'm just going to quickly search for the vegetation object. Punt, punt means dot. So those are these little dots that we see here, and those are trees. Uh, you can see the plus type is bone, that means tree. I'm just going to quickly show you how to make those trees 
uh, show up in AutoCAD. I believe the thing is called buffer. So it's a vector geometry, vector geoprocessing tool, buffer. You select that layer, you go on buffer, and it asks you the distance. I believe this is the diameter, I'm not sure. So uh, the net, uh, our trees are going to get a diameter of uh, 10. And you select run. And as you can see, they all got uh, into bigger circles. Uh, this, the same thing applies. Let me see. As you can see, this is uh, a layer. And if you click on it, you see that it's a rule based uh, symbology. So that's how uh, it, it shows up. These layers will not get into AutoCAD, only these, uh, like uh, scheiding line, spore, but everything that's a uh, uh, symbol won't export uh, also. So if we want to get it into AutoCAD, you go to project. Uh, let me quickly see, import export, export project to DXF save as uh, let me quickly check this and okay. okay so symbology you do not want any because they will come in as hatches in AutoCAD you can select all the layers of which you want a symbology uh, so let me quickly check if the all that we need is selected, yes. Uh, the CRS is there. Use layer title as name, yes. And if you press OK, it will export. It might take a while, so it's exported. And if we now go to there and we double click, open with AutoCAD, and you will see that it all came into AutoCAD and even the trees. So you just press Ctrl A to select it all. You change these properties to by layer and these also by by layer. When you go into the layer panel of AutoCAD you will see that they're all red. You can make it the color that you want and so you have all your layers in here. So that's for getting it into AutoCAD. Uh, if you want, and sometimes houses have, let me quickly check, they have like a point with a number. I'm going to look at, I believe it's called pond, and it's a dot, I cannot find it that quickly. Let me see. Mm -mm -mm. Pond, punt. and it has no symbology and let's say you want uh, let's see categorize symbology and the value should be a number I believe text classify nope that's not it I'm just going to quickly check like this and I hope I can find the point I'm just going to put it all the way on top. You might see it that way. Now, we can do it another way. You see that uh, Electron Weg, that's the name of the road. If you want that in AutoCAD, I believe that's under road something. But eventually, it if it has a name, you can get it into AutoCAD. So let's say this has a size of two millimeters high. When you export to AutoCAD, uh, if you put the symbology on the feature symbology or symbology layer, I believe feature, and you set the scale here to let's say 1000 and you export, you will get those street names that are missing here in your layout view 
on two millimeters if your layout view is one on thousand in scale. So that's like the basic principle. If you want the uh, street names and such, uh, type in the correct scale that you have in GIS and that you're also going to use in AutoCAD. So how do we get all this into Illustrator? You go to Show Layout Manager. You create a new layout. Let's say we want to make this a A3 map. Uh, right mouse, mouse button, page properties, put it on A3. Create a new view. It's rendering the map, so let's say we want to scale 1000. On, on, oh, 1000. Well, maybe 2000. It shows a bit more. So this is going to be our uh, view extent. And to get it into Illustrator, you export a SVG file. And let me uh, put it in here, we save it. Do not export RDF metadata, just line weights and such. And Illustrator sometimes doesn't want to open it. Uh, export it as SVG groups and text as pass. When you hit save, it's going to take a while. Just going to pause it. So it's done. Uh, you take the A3 and you just drag it into Adobe Illustrator. It's importing the file. Also, might take a while. How bigger uh, the bigger your extent is, the bigger the file gets. So one thing to note when it uh, gets into Illustrator, you won't you won't have the same layer names that you have in in the GIS software. but they will be divided into groups. But what I'm now seeing is that they made an update and it does come in as layers. So that's amazing. So yeah, but the other, there are still groups. So you have to ungroup all of those. You can uh, do by selection by layer or some stuff like that to help you out, uh, to help you out to make a nice order of the layers. So this is how you get it inside of Illustrator. And uh, in the, lay the layout manager, I will explain in another tutorial how it actually works. Just save your file as an Illustrator file. And the same goes for this. Save it as a, a W or DWG file. That's about it. Goodbye.